Hey guys, this is Tamara Bartbus with Likes and Living. Thanks for stopping by. Today is the first of a new series that I am starting called Written in the Stars. It is where I've asked volunteers to submit their details and information for me to interpret their birth charts. Now I'm not going to interpret the whole thing, but I'm going to do this in 15 minute chunks where I get to cover basically their sun sign, their moon sign, their rising sign, and maybe their nodal path, as well as any other things that sort of come up in the discussion, as well as get to create a unique essential oil blend for them. A blend that is reflective of the energy of their chart and the key components of it. I'm not exactly sure how this will all unfold. I just am excited to share um, some key things that would help individuals understand one themselves better and to hopefully feel encouraged and known and realize that uh, the stars are more than just beautiful things to look at, but they have messages for us and information that helps us live our true purpose. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm doing today's chart of a friend. Her name is Selena, and it actually, the day I am recording this, it is her actual birthday. This is her birth chart, and as you can see, everybody's chart is going to look unique and different. But let's look at Selena's and see, Selena, for this is for you. What can we learn about you and who you are and your nature, and how can we help you live more true to that? All right, so let's start first with looking at the position of um, the signs around your chart here. As you can see, it, this sign pointing to the horizon um, is pointing to this sign of Virgo. And this might mean that the way that you actually um, put your face out to the world, the way you present yourself is very much uh, of a Virgo tendency. And that would look like very particular, maybe very thorough, good with details or you you look and see details um, you can get caught up into um, things with with those details of analyzing them and actually they can overwhelm you and you sort of get stuck in perfectionistic tendencies or um, or it can be uh, aligned with things of the health nature of learning how to Im serve others and be focused on healing and and health benefits all right so those are a couple of things about that virgo sign that you are really presenting yourself as this is part of who i am this is you know this is a value to me not only do i like to have things just so um i like to keep things in order i like things to be orderly in my mind as well as in my environment but also this need for using that to help serve and um, bring people tools of wealth, health and uh, wellness, okay? So your, that's your rising sign. And then your sun sign up here in this 10th house is caught in the sign of cancer. So this is naturally going to make your personality and your identity surround, be surrounded by this energy of nurturing, caring, mothering, very intuitive, um, and which is a beautiful thing to be. But its placement happens to be in the house of your reputation and career. And so you will be known for um, that you want to be known for and will be known for that, uh, that mission to serve, to, um, to care, to mother, to nurture other people. Um, We'll go more into this in a second, but your your moon sign is over here in Gemini and in the ninth house. And so the moon is all about intuition, about feelings, about where you feel like yourself inside, not just your personality outside. And this happens to be in the ninth house of the things that we know to be true. Uh, you have a lot of Gemini energy. In fact, this dynamic here plays out in a really curious way in that this, this moon Gemini um, 
Gemini moon is cusping, the Gemini energy is cusping over into your 10th house. And so how you feel, the internal state that you carry is actually going to be great a great influence in the reputation that you create for yourself and in your career. And so if you don't take care of those internal states, then you can actually get really off kilter and that will impact the energy going into your career. So when we're talking about the moon energy in a Gemini, um, sometimes you can get overly emotional. Like it's, you, you have, you are able to pick up and feel so many different things going on, um, so much chatter in the air, so much emotion in the air that you uh, can overwhelm yourself. And so if you don't have practices of um, sorting through the information and finding what is most valuable, and what is truth for you, what is um, like your philosophy is of things, if you don't have a way to sort through that, it can become too much and it might be, become even more overwhelming um, than you would like it to be. So that's really important that you have practices. So if you want to feel more like yourself, do things like writing, um, do anything with communication, maybe talking to somebody, um, therapists might be helpful. Um, also, um, yeah, writing, anything with words, anything with words would be really helpful there. The other thing that's interesting to hear is that your Mercury, this little purple planet with the horns, is um, it's a glyph, I guess. Um, it is in the sign of Gemini, and Mercury rules Gemini, which just means that it has it it feels itself in this sign, and that is another key part of your chart is that the the whole chart sort of answers to your Mercury. So understanding that um, how you speak, how you think actually has more of an impact on the overall experience of your life than another person, because that Mercury is the um, chart ruler, as they call it. So it would be really important for you to keep track of your emotions have an outlet for those feelings that might become overwhelming and make sure that um, you do whatever you need to communicate those emotions um, and those thoughts because that will lead again pour that energy into where your identity lies which is in your 10th house or your house of your career and um, and your identity and what you perceive of who you are and what you're here for, okay? Another key thing about this chart to pay attention to is this thing called the nodal axis. And um, this up here is in Taurus, is your south node in the eighth house, and it's 180 degrees opposite of your north node in Scorpio in the second house. And this axis here is essentially teaching you to learn the value of your soul and self-worth. Um, it would be basically saying that the opportunity is to release and let go of the physical things, the attachment to the physical things, so that you can, um, again, use the, become more in tune with your soul worth, and that your soul worth is not attached to the physical but that once you learn that lesson, it will come back and you will receive those physical things. So it's this, it's this process of learning like that they are, they are harmony, harmonizing together, they're working together, but the goal here is to learn and do the deep work, like go into the darker places, probably that many people don't like to go, um, and to probe into them and discover what your true value is on a deeper um, soulful level. And in that transformation, in that journey into the dark, deep depths of your soul, you will find the, the, the comfort, you will find the riches, you will find the, the material things that you're looking for, all right? So that is um, a basic chart read for you. I hope that is interesting and insightful. Um, there's obviously so much more to a chart than just these things that I've shared with you, but I do want to point out a couple of things. There's two essential oil blends that 
felt were particularly resonating with your chart. And the first one is called Aroma Touch. It's a massage blend um, and it's created with cypress, peppermint, marjoram, basil, grapefruit, and lavender. And if you take all of these um, individually and put them together, you have something that creates a greater sense of relaxation. Now with your Virgo-ness and your Gemini-ness, like you could have a very busy mind and also need to be very busy body, okay? And um, that can create a, an undercurrent sense of I always need to be doing and I always need to be learning and really have no um, space to learn to relax to take deep breath, um, to really relax the body physically and so that the heart can open up emotionally, all right? And so this oil is about creating harmony within a lot of different aspects of the body overall. And on a spiritual level, I feel it does the same. It creates flow, it creates motion. That cypress is the oil of creating motion and flow so you are moving with with grace through that peppermint is opening up the heart to be more happy a happy heart uh, the marjoram in aroma touch is all about creating greater connection whether that's intellectual connection emotional connection physical connection relationship connection there's a lot of different ways that it creates connection um, basil for again rejuvenating and providing greater energy um, grateful, grapefruit is a great oil that helps you connect to your body. Uh, your, your Virgo sign is an earth sign, which is very grounding. Your sun sign is a water sign, which is really emotional. And your um, Gemini sign, uh, moon sign is Gemini, which is an air sign, which can be very airy, very um, ethereal. So we want to be able to connect down into the body because that is our vehicle right now in this life experience. And then lavender is the oil of communication, which is really, really vital when it comes to your mercury and your strong Gemini energy overall. So um, all of that together, that blend is gonna be really important to support you. And then the other oil that came up for you as I just muscle tested your, you know, your chart to see which was best and most resonating for you is called DDR Prime. And it's known as the oil of transformation and really breaking down negative family patterns. So when we go into this nodal path, you can see this Taurus to um, Scorpio node, South node to North node. This probing and digging deep is really about um, this oil is to support that process of doing the deeper work about releasing negative family generational patterns. Um, things that have created feelings of doubt, disbelief, despair, and burden that you might be holding on to and beginning to believe that you can be a part of changing those patterns and really regaining more um, energy so that you can release what is old and embrace the new, embrace something beautiful that transforms in that. So one of my, uh, Scorpio is a sign that a lot of people um, have fear of because it is an intense energy. It's a darker energy. It's um, where we go to, um, to sort of break down so we can rise up. And a lot of times people get nervous about the idea of releasing what doesn't serve them um, so that they can embrace something new. And I love the imagery, the imagery of a phoenix rising from the ashes because it really is about you have to burn down the old so you can build the new. And um, in my personal journey, I've learned to value that process. It looks like your chart is saying, this is a big biggie for you as well. So pay attention to that. You know, and DDR Prime has a lot of great individual oils. So I'm just going to break that down for you too. It has frankincense, which is about connecting to the divine, being able to feel known by the divine. Um, wild Orange, all about abundance, receiving more abundance um, materially in a physical way as well as in other ways. Um, Litsia is included in DDR Prime and it's a very much an oil about manifesting and creating um, what you desire to create in your life. 
thyme and summer savory are similar in that they're about being able to relax and uh, release and forgive, all right? Clove is about learning healthy boundaries and what that will look like, which is actually an important part of your chart too, that I'm not gonna go into the details on that, but um, just learning to be yourself and learning to ex embrace that, accept that, because that will help your, you in your own transformation. Um, the Nayuli, I feel like, is this oil of resilience. That every time you get knocked down, you just get back up again, and that is supporting in this transformative process that you get to experience in your life path. And then, of course, lemongrass is incredibly cleansing on all levels um, and beautiful oil for also healing mother wounds or childhood wounds that um, have been um, sort of patterns that have been put in place since we are very, very little. So it uh, looks like those two oils would be the best support for you. How would I suggest you use them? Well, DDR Prime is a great oil to use internally as well as topically. And, um, and Aroma Touch would be one of my favorites for diffusing and then also for um, applying topically. Um, I will send you in an email more information, more details on what you can do to use those specifically that would support you. But those are my recommendations and um, hopefully you find this interesting, insightful and helpful. Let me know. And if anybody else who's watching this is finding this helpful, I'll put a link um, below in the description so that you can also submit and apply to have me read your birth chart and participate in our Written in the Stars series and um, also get some recommendations on essential oils that can help you and be a tool of support in living out your greatest life purposes. So thanks guys. See ya.